seven day forecast. I don't know, rain Sunday. Now we're going into clouds and no, sun. No, 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 girl. You got it all wrong. You need to get in line. Oh, well, guess what? This is my show, the DS show. You get in line right here with special <laughs> guest meteorologist from Fox Five News, Audrey Puente. And I would like to welcome the beautiful Audrey Fuente mm -hmm. to the D Essence Show. Aww. Hi, my love. You're so lovely. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be here. It's been a long time. Wait. It has. It has. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here with us. Very welcome. I'm happy First to be here. First time on set. I know. I love it. what you've done with the place. Thank you. <laughs> it's beautiful. I'm very excited mm -hmm. to have you here. It's an honor <laughs> sitting with you. Thank you. And I just have to... Take note that we're wearing the same oh, yes. color. We're yeah, twinning we, today, guys. Absolutely. We're, I think we're vibing with the maroon dresses, the gold hardware, although you're out blinging me with your rings uh, <laughs> completely. Your personality is blinging <laughs> enough, okay? Uh, I want to just congratulate you first thing on the Bella Magazine article. Oh, thank you. Because it was beautifully done. Mm -hmm. And I think you said you had a lot of fun doing it. I did, I did, because they really uh, spoke to me as being a New Yorker, mm -hmm. beyond you know the weather and beyond uh, the TV thing. It was, it, was a fun, it was a fun interview. Well, I hope this is fun for you as well, oh, because sure. I do <laughs> want to show our viewers a very mm -hmm. up and close and personal mm -hmm. Audrey Puente. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, this is a one-to-one -one exclusive. It's not done for everyone. No. Okay, so y'all better get in line. Extra special. <laughs> Extra special. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's just so much. I, I did a lot of research on you, mm -hmm. and I actually yeah, have a lot of me, notes. Tell me what you found out. Oh, I found some <laughs> juice on you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start from the very mm -hmm. beginning. Okay. Growing up, mm -hmm. Audrey. Mm -hmm. How did we grow up? Well, I grew up uh, in Rockland County, mm -hmm. not far from the city, uh, in Tapan, where my mom mm -hmm. still lives. Oh. And I grew up in what I thought was a, a relatively normal childhood. <laughs> right. My friends, we played up and down the street, we were riding our bikes. You know, I went to you know a nice high school. I was in the school plays. I played in the band. I played sports. Mm. I went to college. It all wow. seemed relatively normal. However, I guess it really wasn't that normal having grown up with a world famous musician as my father. Yeah, the Mambo King. Yeah. Tito Puente. So if you want to throw that in the mix, I would say I grew up in a very loud household, right? Filled with um, very eclectic characters <laughs> coming in and out, which is great. Um, yeah, so but it was radio. Music was constant in my house. My dad had a radio in almost in every room. So Did he? Mu music was playing all the time. What what music were you influenced by? What well, was it was Latin music, of course, honey, all, all the, time? the time. That's all he ever wanted to play. Yes, and in <laughs> fact, it's funny. My children today, you know, they they think they can control the radio. And when I try to tell them, like, do you understand that I did not have a choice when I was your age? I had to listen to Latin music all the time in the car. That was it. <laughs> Wow. It was great. It was great. So your brother, you have a brother, Tito Puente Jr., mm -hmm. who's amazing, by the way. He is Thank like you. the replica of your dad. It's pretty scary sometimes it is to watch him. Yes. It is. I mean, even down to the funny faces that your dad, you yeah. know. And my older but, brother, too. Right? Ron, the, the, the two of them, even when I just have conversations, the both of them have like just, they're the spitting image of my, image of my father. So a lot of their characteristics are very... Um, I like him, and it's almost like I'm talking to him sometimes. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. So you're the only girl? Yes. Are you the baby? No, I'm not the baby. Okay. I'm the middle, but okay. I was definitely daddy's girl. Tell me a little bit about your parents. Um, well, my mom was Margaret. She's still alive, thank goodness. Love her. Yes, yeah, she's wonderful. And, um, you know, they were f they're fun people. My, my dad and her were very fun parents. Very different parents because of Imagine. because of my father's lifestyle, of course. Um, a great story I, I, I share sometimes with people. I guess I'll tell all your viewers as well as that. Um, please share. Believe it or not, I actually I remember to asking my dad one day, "Can he please go to work like all the other dads with a briefcase and a suit?" Because <laughs> I would be embarrassed by the fact that he was playing drums. Really? <laughs> when I was really young. Why is that? Yes, because every you know when you're a kid, you want to be normalized like everyone right, else, right. and everyone else's dads went to an office. I didn't understand as a child that my father was playing drums for a living, not realizing you know the, the, who he really was. Um, he was just my dad, which yeah. I, you know, it, I laugh at now. Now, now having being an adult and having lived through um, my experience with him, it's kind of funny that I told Tito Puente, can you please stop playing drums and <laughs> go imagine? to an office with a briefcase like everyone else's dad? And what he used to say to you. <laughs> he would just laugh it off. Oh, no, my dad was a character. He laughed it off. He just laughed it off. He looks like it. And, and knowing you, meeting you a few times, and then mm. meeting your brother, mm. there's definitely like a, a very well, like a welcoming personality, mm -hmm. fun, mm -hmm. humble. 
Mm. I mean, the first time I met your brother, I didn't even know him. I said hello. He gave me a kiss and a hug. I was like, but yes. I don't know you. He's like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is awesome. Very, We're very open people. Yeah. I, definitely from my father. Absolutely. I mean, my brother and I, uh, were, my younger brother and I, when my dad would take us out, um, like, you know, to the stores or mm -hmm. he loved the Spring Valley Flea Market in Rockland County. Right. <laughs> I don't know if it still exists, but it was a big deal when I was growing Nothing. up. My dad loved to go there all the time. It's an indoor flea market, but he saw, you know, all his fans, so to speak. So people would stop us all the time and he would stop to talk to every single person anywhere we were, anywhere we were. So I think that's where my brothers, both of my brothers and I get that from where we stop and talk to anyone that approaches nice. us and that we're open. Both parents of Puerto Rican? Yes. How was that growing up in Rockland? It's in, well, that was interesting because I actually grew up in a predominantly Jewish neighborhood. Exactly. And I, from my, what I remember of my childhood, I had a small group of Latina friends, mm -hmm. one Latino, Anthony Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I felt a bond with them because of the Latin piece. However, I had friends of all different backgrounds. Okay. So um, I didn't really mm -hmm. feel uncomfortable where I was at. However, looking back, I can see how I was in a minority now, okay. right? Okay. Um, but at the time, it didn't feel that way because I guess I, maybe I was just more open-minded or mm -hmm. I think part of it also was having the cast of characters that surrounded mm -hmm. my father in our house a lot. So I was surrounded by different kinds of people all the time okay. anyway. Okay. I'll be at musicians most of the time and artists of various kinds. So I think I, I, from that, it conditioned me to be open-minded with different kinds of people. So it was very fast-paced. It seemed like your childhood was fast-paced or busy or... I think it was just different. Just I mean, different. I just did things that I guess looking back now, other people didn't do. Like, you know, like for my 18th birthday, I went to the Grammys. You know? Check <laughs> you out. Are you serious? <laughs> yes, that was pretty funny. That is pretty cool. Yeah. So, you know, I got to travel with my dad in the summers when we weren't in school. We would go with him on his European tours because he would travel all over Europe. I love that he included you with all of that. Yeah, it was, it was it's fun. It's a blessing. It is. I, I'm grateful. I saw, I saw a lot of Europe, although it's funny because I, I say I've traveled to a lot of places. However, I didn't see a lot of the places we right. went to. I saw the nightclubs, right? <laughs> I saw the concert halls, the outdoor venues, things like that. I remember going to the uh, Eiffel Tower uh, for the first time. And we literally, we took my dad's tour bus. We, I didn't drive. We had the driver right, drive right. a whole bunch of us on the bus. Let's go see the Eiffel Tower. We got off the bus, took the quick picture, and then left. Because <laughs> <Right? 'Cause>, like, <laughs> we had to get to the, the gig. It's like a picture. Right. Because we had to get to the gig, right? So it wasn't right. like I traveled Europe and like traveled Europe. It was more like I was touring with my father through Europe that every summer. So but you cool. know what? It was a different kind of experience. I loved it. I'm, I'm very much grateful to having had it. How did your parents meet? Um, they met, my dad was already a performer okay. and he was at, my mother was in a nightclub and my father was actually interested in my mother, but she, she was not interested. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And eventually he wooed her. Look at that. Yeah. And three kids later, right? Well, actually my, my dad had been married once before. That's where okay. my older brother is okay. from Ron. Yes. Okay. Got it. So, um, and his mom was always included. We, it, another thing that was great, we included everyone in our Thanksgiving meals. So we all had uh, Thanksgiving together growing up. Nice. So it was, it was wonderful. So he seems he was, he, it seemed like he was very tight knitted with his children, being who he was. Yes. Well, he had a busy lifestyle. I could imagine. My mother kept us as normalized as possible. That's good. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's a middle ground. Yes. It keeps you humble. Absolutely. I love that. Yes. Uh, so sadly, in 2000 mm -hmm. of April, right? He it had was, passed. It was May 31st. May 31st. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. May 31st was his last day on earth, mm -hmm. right? Um, what exactly took place? Was it the heart attack and complications? Well, he was actually in for surgery mm -hmm. and for, to replace a nitro valve. And what had happened was there were complications during the surgery. So he never came out of the emergency, he, he never came out of the operating room. Okay. Um, okay. How, where, where were you at the moment? At the hospital. We were all there and yeah. we, we had been there in the morning. My mother and I had uh, taken him in in the morning and... I want to say it was like seven in the morning for the surgery, and it was at eleven o'clock at night when we found out wow. that he passed. Yes, yeah, so we had been there all day. My younger brother had flown in from Florida. Okay. Um, my older brother was there. We were all there. Oh, we were all there. That's like bittersweet, but right. at least everybody was there with him. Right. Yeah. And with each other, like yeah. we needed each other. That definitely. Mm -hmm. So he definitely left a legacy. Yes. Do you have one word to just like describe that? Is there one word about him? that you would want us to know? I mean, people often ask me, why didn't I fo follow my father's footsteps? Oh, we was definitely gonna get to uh, that, girl. Well, that's so, in my notes. That leads, me into yeah. my, that leads me into the word because 
I always say, my response is always, actually, I feel like I did because my greatest, the greatest lesson he taught me was to follow my passion, which I did. Okay. With not only just in my professional life, doing, you know, being, the, being a meteorologist, yeah. but in my personal life as well with a bunch of other things. However, so I would say, when I think of my dad, I think of passion. Okay. Because that's exactly how he lived his life, very passionately, mm -hmm. and it's exactly how I live my life. I love it. Passion mm -hmm. is everything. I, 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 be that. <laughs> I, I believe that if you don't have a passion in your life, mm -hmm. like, what are you living for? Like, mm -hmm. passion keeps you going. Like, I had this saying recently that I came across, and I use it often. Like, I tell friends, I'm like, listen, if it's not a hell yeah, it's a no. <laughs> right? I mean, that's how we should live. Yeah. Right? Now, I, one of my questions to you was a memory of your dad, but I mm -hmm. also did a little research, and mm -hmm. I found out a little inside, a little insider. Ooh. Ooh. So there was a Manudo concert. Yeah. Perhaps. Would you like to tell us the story? Um, <laughs> well, wait, 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 the, the story when we went to Manudo uh -huh. is when I found out how famous my father was. Is that the story? Uh, that, I don't know. You tell well, us. That is the, well, that is the, my, my connection with Manudo. Um, <laughs> I didn't know my father was that famous until we went to see Manudo. <laughs> Look at that. Yes. It was when they first came to New York City. They were playing Raider City Music Hall. Oh, I forgot huge. the year. Did you? It's okay. Okay. I forgot the year. I, I didn't know if you I know I was in middle school. or not. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I know I was in like, I don't know how old I was, maybe like 13. I can't even remember. It was middle school. But anyway, it was when they went to Radio City Music Hall and my dad got us backstage to meet them. I was a huge fan. And I thought, really, it was his manager that got us backstage. I didn't realize it was my father. <laughs> yeah, all right. So we went backstage. We met them. They fawned over him. And I was like, okay, you know, just being nice. I love that. But then when we went to the, um, when we went to the seat, be seated, we were mobbed by everyone in the audience. Everyone basically wanted to meet my dad and talk to him, take pictures, autographs, the whole thing. So much so that we had to have bodyguards stand around us during wow. for the performance. And I didn't get it. I was like... Why is everyone like bothering him? <laughs> like, like, we're here from Manudo, right? Right, right. <laughs> and then it was that was really when my eyes were opened up. I was like, oh my god, like he's a star. People, people really know know who he is. <laughs> he's the king. Right? Now I know that, right? <laughs> um, what do you miss most about him? Um, the energy, just his energy, being around him. It was always. I wouldn't say it was a party, but it was just a very energetic atmosphere whenever he was in the room. Mm -hmm. He was bigger than life. When he walked into a room, you, like, you knew he was there. And he, kind of, and he did that on stage as well. Yes. And he put everything into his music. He, was, he lived life passionately. I mean, we, we all grew up with him. I grew up with him in my home, too. Mm -hmm. And Celia Cruz, which I know they were very close. Yes. Right? Yeah. So they probably party and having together. <laughs> Celia was in our house often. Um, I, you know, my childhood memories, I have many childhood memories of being around her. She was a wonderful lady. I know they have like a whole uh, tribute to her. Mm -hmm. They had it in Woodlawn and they mm -hmm. had her outfits. I heard it was really, really nice. She has so, some great she's outfits. she's buried over there, right? Yes, in the cemetery. Yeah. She had some incredible outfits. Yeah. That is a closet I would have loved to play in, right? <laughs> she had a little bit of everything. Yes. <laughs> um, but do, you, do you think that he adds an advantage to your career before we go to break? That's a great question. Um, some people would think so. However, I do not. Okay. Because um, I, I like to say that everywhere I've been in my career, mm -hmm. I definitely knew somebody, mm -hmm. but it was because of all the networking that I did. That's, that's what it's about. Yeah. And on that note, mm -hmm. we're going to be right back, right here on the <laughs> Diaz's show with Audrey Puente. Beautiful. Are you okay? Yeah, but you I could have...
And we're back right here on the D. Essa show with meteorologist from Fox 5 News, Audrey Puente, also mm -hmm. the daughter of the late Tito Puente, uh, mm -hmm. the king of Mambo. Mm -hmm. We were just speaking of the advantages that maybe she had, uh, thought she had, or f maybe people feel that she has because of who her dad is. Mm -hmm. But we were actually saying networking is key. Absolutely. Um, I started by going to weather conferences mm -hmm. uh, when I was early in my career, mm -hmm. and then eventually to news conferences. And I basically schmoozed my way through a room. And I feel that every job I've ever had was definitely because I knew somebody, but it was because I knew somebody that I met at a conference. I always kept in touch. It's something that I tell all my interns that I've had throughout my career that definitely keep in touch with me. Yes. Let's stay connected because it's through connections that we actually get to progress in our career. And that is oh. exactly how I got to where I am. You just made me have chills because <laughs> networking is everything. It you is. Have to, and you have to build relations. Like, Absolutely. In the beginning, I always thought, oh, it's who you know. No, it's how well you know them. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to build that relation. My father often said, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. Oh, that's true, it's too. It's true, right? Because I could say I know all these people, but if they but don't like, know me... Who? then wh where do I go from there? Yeah, and that, so, that's the hardest thing. But it's up to the, your, yourself to keep in touch with those people, yeah. right? It's not up to them, because they, they meet so many people on the floors of all these conferences, yeah. but I made it a point to stay connected. I agree, mm -hmm. I love it. Schooling, when did, you, uh, when did you decide to study weather? It was my, oh, that's a great question. That's, it was my last semester at Syracuse. I'm getting points here with you. You are, this is a really good question. <laughs> so I was attending Syracuse University and I was actually going to school to be a lawyer because my father um, said basically that he would like me to study law to be working in the music industry. So an entertainment lawyer you were going for? Well, specifically in the music industry because he said he wanted a lawyer he could trust. Look at that. <laughs> and I was the bookworm of the family. Okay. <laughs> so okay. He said, you, you're going to go to college and you're going to be the lawyer. <laughs> so uh, I was going to Syracuse and I was going on a, I was sort of leaning towards a pre-law path. And it was my last semester. And one of my friends said to me, there's an opening at my TV station that she was already interning oh at. Oh, my goodness. For a weather intern. And she said exactly what she said. She said, you're always watching that stupid weather channel. You should go there and audition for the internship or interview for it. Right, right. So I went. I said, that would be fun. It'd be great. And I actually went there, got the internship, and boom, that's where it actually started because the weatherman there put me in front of the camera one day and said, have you ever thought about doing this for a career? And I was like, no, I'm going to be a lawyer. And he says, I think you might have a future in this. And I said, really? This would be great. And that was it. I graduated from Syracuse. I went home from college. I told my parents, I'm not going to law school. Oh, and I wow. Said, I said, oh, really? What are you going to do? And I said, I want to be in television. Okay, you go out and get a job. And I went straight to Fox 5. And get I, out. Yes, and I was a trainee in their training program right out of college. That September I started, right after Labor Day. Wow, weekend. that's mm -hmm. wasting like no time whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the model. Yeah. Don't waste time. And now I'm back in the same building where I started right after college. It's really, it's really wild. <laughs> but I've also noticed being in this industry, it kind of goes around. Mm -hmm. You kind of mm -hmm. make your, your circle. Mm -hmm. um, any other, well, okay, if it wasn't whether you'd be a lawyer. Okay, we got that out the way. Um, and you also mentioned why it's not music or radio, but it's weather. Right. What is your, what is your thing about weather? What is it? I just remember growing up um, the, just being affected by systems in our area, like, like snowstorms, um, Hurricane Gloria when it came through. I just remember, like, lightning flashes of the hurricane when it came through and and there was Hurricane Frederick too when I was a kid and oh, these wow. are, I mean I'm, like, I guess I'm, going, I'm dating myself but um, <laughs> these storms were just so fascinating to me and I was constantly watching the Weather Channel when it debuted <laughs> I was, remember when it debuted and I used to, we didn't have cable at the time Yes, I'm old enough to remember when there was a cable. Fine. <laughs> and um, I used to go to my friends' homes to watch the Weather Channel because my parents wouldn't get cable at the time when it first came out. And that was just really it, and I was fascinated with it. And growing up, I loved math and I loved geography. So it okay. all kind of tied in together. It does tie in together. What's the hardest thing about doing the weather? The hardest thing about doing the weather? Yeah. Um, What's your challenge, if you have any still? I would say being here in the tri-state area, it's really when we get things like the rain-snow mix 
That, oh. that really, ugh, that really gets you me like, You can't get that ugh. away from us, Audrey, yeah, at it's, all? It's our topography, it's our proximity to the ocean, things like that. And so oh. those, those are like, for me, those are the most difficult forecasts because you want to get that rain snow line just right and it's, sometimes it can be difficult. And it's, I mean, we get it, I get yeah. it. I, yeah. I would say I'm, I'm definitely right that I'm wrong, yeah. more right than I'm wrong. <laughs> However, it's really my most challenging forecast in this area. So you would say sometimes you've had, sometimes it has failed you. A weather report has failed you because it kind of changes up a little bit. Well, I don't want to say you fail, would, but. Right, if you want to rely and say that the data failed me, yeah. <laughs> I'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with that. What, is, what is the art put in, like what's the art of being a, media, a meteorologist? Like what, what's the work in your day? Okay, so I show up at Fox 5 and I actually analyze all the weather data. Basically, we get data coming into all our computer systems and it's a lot of numerical data as well as verbiage. And I, I have a variety of websites that I go to to basically take a look at the data in different layers of the atmosphere. And when I look at all of this stuff, I won't get too technical, but basically I come up with the forecast myself. Okay. And then I create all the graphics to tell the story of that forecast to our audience. Any secrets or tips? Anything fun about the green screen? You know, because when I was a child seeing a uh, meteorologist, I was like, oh, they're, they're, how do they know where to point? Right. But I mean, now, obviously, I know how, but... Well, then you know that it takes practice, really. That's really it what is. it is. It's not an instant thing because everything is in reverse. So what appears to me pointing to the right, it's actually left side of me. So it takes practice to really get the balance of understanding where you're pointing. But once, you know, once you have it. It's actually really fun. It's the most fascinating thing when people come to visit. They want. They all want to go in front of the green screen. They, yeah. Some people want to sit at the anchor desk. Some people want to like tour around the the newsroom. But it's the green screen that everybody really, really wants to be in front Interesting. of. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so we've been previously on Channel Two, mm -hmm. Channel Nine, right? My news mm -hmm. at nine, mm -hmm. and now Fox Five. Mm -hmm. Is there any difference between the stations or a uh, setting that you preferred or? You know, all, all my positions were, were wonderful. Um, I started actually on air at NBC here in New York. Look at that. That was, just, I mean. How do you, like, get out of college and just go straight for the winners? Like, the big, like, oh, that's huge. We got to go big. We got to go big or go that's, home, that's right? That's huge. Like, right away, just like Island off. prize. Got to have your eye that's on the That's amazing, prize. Yeah. yeah. I like that. But What's right out of college, sign? the Pisces. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. It's funny because usually they say Pisces are procrastinators. Well, well, maybe not female, I'm, but... <laughs> I might be a procrastinator occasionally. I love that. We're also dreamers, I guess. Yeah. We dream big. Yeah. So, because I find Fox 5 very um, relatable. Mm -hmm. It's friendly. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's current. Well, we're it's, also very local. Chills. We're very local. We're very New York-based. So, yeah. I think that's uh, our appeal to the audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you guys have a, a great crew, mm -hmm. especially in the morning. Yeah. And there's a lot of female empowerment. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also noticed that there's like a turnover that, that sometimes us that are watching don't understand. And some, sometimes you'll see um, a talent or a newscaster or someone like yourself that we start to grow with and actually love and mm -hmm. look forward to our day starting with you. And then they're not there. You know, like, for example, Greg Kelly. One day he's there, next day he's not. Mm -hmm. how, how does that, like, why are... Why are they just not on our TV sets anymore? Is it personal reasons? Is well, it... I'm really not privy to that um, decision-making okay. process. Okay, okay. Um, but I do understand and appreciate what you're saying about yeah. how people like to see their people, right? Yeah. And I feel very blessed that I've, been in, I've been in New York for 20 years now. Yeah. So we just, I just passed my 20-year mark on the air here. So yes. um, I feel very much embraced and at home in this market, no matter which station I'm at. Yeah. Although I do love my Fox 5. <laughs> Um, all right, I got to that one. Stigmas. Mm -hmm. In my research, I came across Weather Girl. Mm -hmm. Weather Girl was not a positive thing back then. It started in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. And it was a female that was appealing to look at. Didn't really have the education. Um, not paid very well. Mm -hmm. And just kind of thrown there to say today's weather, blah, 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 blah. I see a difference, but sometimes I turn on the Spanish news and I see that stigma there. Mm. How do you feel about that? 
Like, what is that all about? Is this still existing? Well, how far we've come, I was about to say, from the, the, what you described. Yeah. Um, I don't feel that, actually, anymore. When I started coming up in my career, it was still very much a male-dominated field. Yes. I was already attending weather conferences, as I mentioned earlier, and a lot of news conferences. And in the weather conferences, I mean, I, I was extremely small amount of women there at the time. Now we'll see more and more women, yeah. but I was definitely in the minority. And being a Latina, I mean, talk. I mean, I think I was the only Latin female meteorologist in the room. However, to back it all up. So impressive. Thank you. It is. And in, so in the opposite of what you had described the weather girl as, we really, now we've done the 180, right? Because now yeah. we are educated, right? Now yeah. we do have degrees and now we are like being paid well and, and we're actually making our mark. We're not just something pretty to look at, right? We actually, like for me, I've never been offended by someone even calling me that because I, ha I have the goods to back it up. Perfect. Perfect. So what do you feel about these girls that are being the stigma of a weather girl? I know you've seen those Spanish news. I don't know. I kind of like their dresses. Because they, <laughs> they're like really like they the have, tight. I mean, they look beautiful. I like beautiful. their dresses. They have nice hair. But are you like I mean, really <laughs> listening to the weather at that point? <laughs> some of them, some of my colleagues actually, they, they do very nice jobs presenting themselves. I think it's more of the other countries. It's really outside of the U.S. where we've seen yeah, a lot, especially right. Latin American countries where we're seeing what is could be perceived as what you described earlier as the weather girl. Yeah. So I think it's more outside the U.S. Mm -hmm. Like when we get to more of the Latin American countries like Mexico and yeah. South and South America, it's just. But it's a different vibe. It's a different um, lifestyle. You know. You know, being Latina, we know. Like we we love our curves. It's just. A, it's yeah. it's a matter of our culture. So I appreciate that's what their culture is and where they're living, right? So I understand that, that they're representing their population. I get it, right? Here in the U.S., it's not, so, we're more of a melting pot. Like it's, so that's why it's a little more um, conservative compared yeah. to what you see in the Latin American countries. So I don't, look. yeah, so I don't, I, I appreciate them for where they're at and what, what they're representing. Okay. Any hardships or discrimination? And, oh, I, in I get, your career? Yeah, I get asked that. I didn't feel, I really didn't feel like I experienced much because, if any, I really don't even have any stories because I've That's always awesome. felt empowered by who I was, what my education was, and more, most importantly, my focus and determination on where I wanted to do and where I wanted to be. I've had people tell me no. I've had people okay. tell me that, you know, you can't do this or it's not going to be possible for you. However, it was really just background noise for me because I was clear about where I was going and what yeah. my vision was. So... It was like, I, I don't know. Just, well, they, say, like they say rejection is God's protection. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's, rejection is a good thing sometimes. And sometimes it drives you. Oh, definitely. It pushes you like, okay, yeah. I'll show you. Some people feel that. Yeah, I recently did a post like that on Instagram talking about a guidance counselor I, who actually told me that I should not apply to college because I wasn't, there was no way I was getting in. And now I have a master's wow. degree. Yeah. And I have also had a news director <laughs> tell me there was no way I was ever going to be on television with the voice that I had. Um, yes, <laughs> and here I am. So, you know, so those things have happened. However, I never, they never really truly affected me, although it's probably not true, right? Because in the back of my mind, they probably did. You go did. home, and I'm sure. Right, yeah. but however, it was more like, okay, you're a no, then I'm going to move on to the whoever's going to be the yes for me. And that's really how I really perceived it or proceeded ahead. How do you deal with any embarrassing moments, being that your life? I laugh. Well, yes, I, I've, seen, I've seen a clip that you were laughing for about a good three, yeah. four minutes. I just keep set. it going. I just keep That's it going. Hilarious. Oh, that, that one. That infamous yes. one. That was, that, I actually lost control of my laughter there. That and was, I loved it yeah. because it was so human and you still went forth and did your job, yeah. laughing and all, but you still mm -hmm. did it and it was enjoyable. Yeah. Should we tell everybody, if you don't insert the clip, but it was basically two, to the two morning anchors, they were at the, um, what is that, Mud show, the truck mud show that they do at the Meadowlands, and she, Rosanna Scott, basically pushed her co-anchor into the mud, and I thought it was the most hilarious thing I'd seen. He needed to be pushing the mud. Oh my God. Always mess with her. Oh my God. That clip was hilarious. It still makes me laugh. So let's get to some fun stuff. What is your daily like? What is your daily life like when you're not? Okay, what time do we get up in the morning and start getting ready? And... My alarm goes off at 6 a.m. Okay, that's not too bad. No, oh, except when I do the morning show. When I'm doing the morning show, it goes off at. Uh, 2 30. Oh, wow. In the morning, yes. How long is your prep? Um, well, in the morning show, it's actually a lot faster. We have to we really crunch it in. It's like boom, boom, boom because 
you know, at that hour, every every minute counts if you can get the right. extra sleep in. But I have to right. be at the station in the makeup chair at 3.15. Oh, wow. And we go on the air at 4.30. So, so what time are we going to sleep fast. at night? Well, I mean, I have children, so they keep... That's <laughs> usually, 9 a.m. would be great, but sometimes it's not until 10 a.m. I mean, 10 p.m. Wow. Did I say a.m.? Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> and, um, but my normal day is at 6 a.m. So I get up, okay. I, I prepare my three children for school, get them off to school, and then I prepare myself to get to work, and I'm usually at the station around between 9 and 10 o'clock in the morning. What are the ages of your children? Now they're 14, 12, and 9. Oh, okay. And 9 going on 29. Okay. <laughs> so you have ages that are pretty independent somewhat. Yes. You know, they can feed like, themselves. They yeah. can bathe themselves. They can brush their own teeth. They can do all that stuff, yes. Who's picking out the outfits in the morning? Are you? No. I'm not allowed to do any such thing. Absolutely really? not. Really? Oh, no. All three of them have their own style. Uh, there's, yeah. I have no control. Whatsoever. I love that. Other than, you know... <laughs> You're not wearing that if it's got a midriff. Got it. <laughs> and and yourself, are you picking out your own outfits in the morning? Yes. Okay, because yes. we love the Instagram posts that you put up every day <laughs> of what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. I also love the Instagram stories. I think you're the most cutest thing when it comes to showing what you're eating and where you're about and the little <laughs> and the and you narrating. I love it. It's Thank like you. so like I don't know. It's very um, quirky, but Thank it's very you. cute. And I also like the way you format your Instagram page. Because you have a picture, quote, or model, right. picture. Like, the checkerboard. You, yeah, yeah. Do you keep, like, memory? Like Yes. <laughs> well, I have a running list in my phone. I've, had, I've always enjoyed quotes. I, used yeah. to, I have books. Like, when I used to read books in college, I mean, I, mean, I still read books. But yeah, like, we just, you just did, like, uh, a whole Instagram story for a few days with all the books that, that I read in 2018. So cool. yeah. I'll do yeah. another one for 2019. I love it. But I used to underline significant passages or quotes or things of meaning to me. I got, literally, my bookmark was a ruler, and I, I have books lined with everything. So in my now we have iPhones, right? right? So now I just type things in my phone, things that impact me. So I have a running list in my phone. So that. when I wake up or the night before I may prepare yeah. it, what's my thought, what's my feeling, what's my vibe, and that's what I, get, that's what I post. Do you think vision boards are still working? Do I you think, think it's so. something that... Yeah. That individual should do? I think absolutely. In fact, okay. I have a friend who, she does a vision board on her phone. She created boards, like, you know, that you can make... Um, you can pick, do anything on your phone I nowadays. Know. You make Isn't collages with your photos. And so she has them, you know, for romance, career, vacation spots. So cool. And I was like, what a great idea. Get it, it on the phone, just sweep through it. It is, because I, I can't seem to put a vision board together, but mm. it's all up here. So if you have it in front of you, though, it's I think it does do something. There's an energy about it by actually looking at it and visualizing it. Yeah. We'll get you like picture, picture collages. I love it. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a quick break. Mm -hmm. my, my director's like, let's go to break. <laughs> Be right back on the Diaz show here with Audrey Fuente. Mm -hmm. And I'm a hip hop artist and teaching artist from the Bronx. I'm a husband and a father of six beautiful children. And you are watching The Essence Show. It's time to get in line. What's up? This is Tax Crew. We're here on The, the Essence Show. Get in line. We are the collaborators from She Heals and. We are at the Hi, my name is Luis Eladio Torres, and I'm the Bronx principal. I'm here at the DSN show, so get in line. Good evening, everyone. Good day. This is Jeffrey Smith, and I am privileged to be here with the hostess of hostesses, the Essence on the DSN show. And I'm Jeffrey Smith. I love being with her. And everybody, if you're not in line, or if you're not online, get in line. Good. What's up, everybody? My name is Mark Ray. I'm an actor filmmaker from Spanish Harlem. And if you don't know, you better find out. Ask somebody. Get in line, you heard? Voice of the Kai, a.k.a. New Smooth. I'm here in the Bronx, but I'm from Brooklyn, New York. And I'm here on the DSN show. Get in line. Hola, mi gente. Contigo, EC from Funk Salsa Urban. Here at the DSN show. Get in line. Hi, mi gente. I'm Miss Yaya, and I'm here at the DSN show. Get in line. What's up? It's your boy Chris Sean Dior that everybody hates Chris, and you're now tuned into the Essence Show. Get in line, get in line, right, 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 right now. I'm here on the D Essence Show. My name is Sean from Coco Vida Coquito. Get yeah, in you're line. You're right now with your boy Lazarus, the top dog. We here live at Bronx now with my homegirl D Essence. Make sure everybody else stay in tune and get in line. Hey, it's your boy 950 Kev, Kevin Pryor, aka LeBron James, the radio game, the most electrifying man, me, the gay, except for D Essence. And I'm tuned in live at the D Essence Show. It's your girl Vina Love, and I'm here with the Essence. 
get in line. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Eddie Pabone here on the DSN Show. Get in line, baby. I am here at the DSN Show. I am Isabel, the author of Candy from Broken Pieces. Get in line. My name is Damaris Oliveras from Island Life Kitchen, and I'm here at the DSN Show. Get in line. Yo, que lo que te habla Cacique. También me conocen como Victor Almanza, tu actor favorito de Power Empire 1155. I'm about to drop some ish. You know what I'm saying? So I just te estoy diciendo que se pongan en línea. ¿Sabe lo que significa? That means get in line. The Essence Show. What's up? This is Danny Peralta from The Point. You here with The Essence? Get Sending in line. this text message because I need to get on the The Essence Show because if anybody is going to understand what I'm doing and really support it, I need to be on The Essence Show. So get in line. This is your boy Romanes, the funny Latino from the Bronx with love. Hello, everyone. My name is Monique Rivera. I am the founder of The Womb Woman Empowerment. I am at the The Essence Show and I am walking in my purpose. I tell you to walk in your purpose and get in line. And we're back, and I hope y'all getting in line. Yeah. That wasn't enough for you. Jeez, <laughs> right? I love that. <laughs> now I can add you to that. I love it. We have so many. Mm -hmm. It's like we have to start clipping them up because mm -hmm. there's so many of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were speaking of your children mm -hmm. and your Instagram page. Mm -hmm. But I, um, Future, we have a book. Are we working on a book? We are working on a book. Yes. yes. We are writing. We're writing a few books, actually. Are we? Well, because I started writing at in December of last year, mm -hmm. because I've been approached many times about writing a book, and um, you're interesting. You have like your personal is so interesting, and then what you do is just thank you fascinating. Like not every day do you come across who you are. Mm -hmm. So it's I don't know. I just find it very interesting. Your lifestyle and where you come from, mm -hmm. and then. You also know how to live your normal life. You're very mm -hmm. private. Mm -hmm. Your children are private. Mm -hmm. And like it's an it's a blessing to continue that when you're in front of viewers mm -hmm. every single day. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're doing for that, mm -hmm. I, I'm I writing, commend you on that. I thank you. Yeah. As I said, I'm I started writing in December mm -hmm. and I'm right now I'm writing. Like so cause I was because I was struggling for a long time to put out a book because I was I felt overwhelmed and yeah. didn't really know where to start and begin. It's something I've never really pursued. Yeah. But I had a f two friends actually who authored their own who authored some books and they basically said just start writing. Just write it. And it was just the greatest advice because I just said I'm not, no pressure on if anyone's even, even going to read it. I just said let's just start writing. Yeah. And that's all I've been doing. So like. But now, now there's like more than one book that is coming out of it. Oh, <laughs> like look at there's that. like three to four books coming out. Look so, at that. so we're gonna see what happens, but um, something will come out. So you're writing three or four different books, or you're just writing and then you're just gonna collaborate. Well, I've been writing and I see three to four books out of it. Really? Like, so now they're outlined. Yeah, like they're outlined right now. So the books themselves, that is so and so cool. what, what I'm writing will be inserted in one of four different books. <laughs> I love that. Right. What's going on with the fashion? I know that you had a, a clothing line or. Oh, yeah, that was cute. Yeah, what happened? Yeah. Well, uh, life. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> yeah, life happened. It may be resurrected. We'll okay. see. All right. Um, it was, yeah, uh, rhinestone encrusted or rhinestone embellished t shirts with Ooh. rock and roll themes with my three kids. It was great. It was really, it started because I love bling. Clearly not as much as you love bling. <laughs> I do. I've I been out bling. In a world of glitter and bling, I've I'd been be out so bling. <laughs> so um, when my first daughter was, was born, about a year and a half, when she was a year and a half, I would buy the rhinestone shirts for her, mm -hmm. but in one washing, everything would fall off. Definitely, yeah. And I was the like, what? yeah, it was terrible. It was yeah. so cheap, and I was really annoyed with it. So I basically <laughs> learned, went to the trade shows, learned how to make the shirts myself, just to make them. And then when I, she would wear them to preschool, like I bought the actual machine, the heat press machine, the whole oh, thing, right? It. Got the Swarovski crystals. I went like to the top of the yeah, line. Yeah. <laughs> but when my daughter wore these things to school, other moms would ask me, where did you get that shirt? And I said, well, I made it. And they're like, oh, can you make me one? And it kind of grew. And then I started being asked to make them for party favors. And I was giving them out as party favors. And oh, wow. So it started growing. And then I started being asked to go to school fairs and other places where I was selling the shirts. And but then you know two kids three kids later I just <laughs> you should put them all to work now and do that I, I probably should yeah. right because yeah I love bling yeah all right I look for the tips on hair and weather oh, from you okay because there's always an Instagram mm -hmm. story like mm -hmm. 
The hair is not good. The hair is great. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Thank you. You're welcome. It's, it's a service. <laughs> it's a service. It's a much needed service. Yes, it is. What what is this? The humidity still that's messing up the hair? Yes. Well, you know, I have to, people have to know is it going to be a good hair day or a bad hair day? You have to know if it's going to be windy because you know then I have my lip gloss <laughs> alert, right? You don't want the hair oh, stuck in that. the lip gloss if the yes. winds are going to be of a certain mile per. <laughs> this is important stuff. It is. This is the stuff that I need to know. If, I, if I want to know and I appreciate it, I know there's other people who also would need to know and yeah. will appreciate it as well. And that's yeah. why I do those kitschy forecasts. Yeah, and we yeah, and the allergy season. Any update? Yeah, as well, you can see, yeah. my voice is I horrible hear you. right what's, now. What's going on there? I don't know. It's just allergies. <laughs> yeah. It's taking control. Mm. It is something we got. You're having against. a good hair day, though. What's well, up? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, favorite song. Favorite song. I don't know. I, the artist I'm really into right now is Lizzo. Are you? <laughs> She's amazing. I really enjoy her. I, I really enjoy do. her too. Yeah, she's very uplifting, but sexy and raunchy as she wants to be. Yeah, but. and I, if you really like listen to the lyrics, like she says some really great stuff. She does. Along with, I mean, I mean Cardi B. I mean, she's just really. I, I, I really hear her. I hear her. Do you? I do. I don't. I think a lot of people. She's misunderstood and yeah. or mis, you know, mi, misinterpreted by many. But if you really listen, or at least take a look at, read the lyrics. I mean, what she's saying, you know, is oh. she's v valid. And what about that ring that she just got oh recently? Yes. It's huge. It's over the top. Yeah. It's over the top. But well, you said her. you would you would accept that if you had well, that listen, ring. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? <laughs> it is beautiful, but yeah. it's really over the top. Mm -hmm. Favorite song by Dad? Um, well, Mambo Diablo is actually my favorite song. Okay. Favorite season or weather? Oh, summer. Yes. Yes, I like it hot. The hotter, the better. You'll never right. hear me complain about the heat. Even in New York. Even anywhere. Humidity, nothing. I mean, Grant, yes, I, I love a dry day, a hot, dry day. But even if it's humid, as long as it's hot, I'm happy. <laughs> Favorite exercise, because we know you as fitness. Mm -hmm. You love fitness. I do love fitness. Every morning or every day you're working out, mm -hmm. you show off your gear. Yeah. My favorite is probably anything to do with my arms. Okay. Yeah, which is why you see them. Well, you can't see them here. But, but, but that's, very, <laughs> that's very important because you're pointing out to us the weather. So your mm -hmm. arms are on display all the time. Yeah. And that adds, get a lot and of TV adds weight to that, right? That's why I'm always right. a certain way. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Arms, okay. arms are my favorite. Anything that has to do with arms, I love. Push-ups, mostly lifting weights. I love, you know, doing taking the barbells and just, yeah. Ew, don't mess with her, guys. <laughs> uh, what do you do when you're home? What do you watch? What are you about? Oh God, I really, I don't watch TV. No housewives, no nothing? Okay. Come on. All right, all right, all right. Thank you for the <laughs> that is my guilty pleasure. The one, yes. That is the one thing that I do have on my DVR. However, I rarely get to watch it because I'm always busy with kids and stuff. But um, when I do watch things, it's actually on YouTube. I watch YouTube regularly. Like, that's just... Yeah? Yeah. There's a lot on YouTube. There is. And one thing will lead you to the next. Yes. And you'll be on YouTube forever. And it will actually take, if, if you're listening to any type of music, it will take you through a journey. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing. It I did yeah. recently run through the Netflix um, yeah. know, menu recently yeah. with my kids because I was looking for something specific because I my daughter had to watch. I didn't realize how many great documentaries on Netflix. Now I like want to block That's out a, a week of my life just That's to watch lot. all these things. My mom kind of rushed over yeah. to me not so long ago. We got to give Netflix. There's so many different yeah, series on there. Oh, my God. It's unbelievable. It's like overwhelming. I'm like, yeah, it, it can be overwhelming. It is. Um, favorite food? Cheese. Any particular one? Every single one. <laughs> What's the best cheese you've tried? Because I know you do go to these exclusive places. Oh my gosh! I, the best cheese I've tried? I can't. You I, eat I, good. Or it's like my, it's it? like picking my favorite child. I, there is no like. I, like <laughs> there is no. Fa I love them all equally. <laughs> so you like the guesso? <laughs> mm -hmm. Anything with cheese on? I love cheese. Favorite place to eat? Any place you could recommend? Oh my god! I sh I go to so many places right now. The stuff off the top of my head only because yeah. I recently did speak about it is Wild Ink. Okay. Wild Ink is in the new Hudson Yards. Okay. Oh, I can't even. What it's type of spectacular. Food? It has an Asian, sort of, has an Asian Latin blend in it, actually. Oh, that's fun. So it's one of those fusion places. Yeah. Um, really fresh ingredients, really fresh foods. Um, I, I can't, I, oh, it just melts in your mouth. I, I can't speak imagine. enough about it. And besides, and the view's spectacular, too. You get to see the it vessel. Is. There's a sunset view there. Oh. I also really enjoy Little Spain. Down in okay. the basement of Hudson. I guess Hudson Yards is my favorite spot right now to eat at. I hear a lot about that place. <gasps> I've, I I've eaten at yet. almost every single restaurant there. And every single one has been fabulous. Oh, so the yeah. food is good. Absolutely. Plus a good view. Yes. So it's definitely worth trying Absolutely. and visiting. Absolutely. Absolutely.
fashionista, what is your favorite clothing article, article of clothing, I should say? Well, my, my thing is handbags, actually. I love handbags. That's, my, that's really where my... All types, all colors, all sizes. Yes, I, I run the gamut from, I have, a, I have a Target bag that I get complimented on all the time. It was $20, <laughs> people stop You'd be me. you surprised. Yes, and then I have a Gucci bag that I absolutely love, you know, so I, I can run the gamut. I don't, I don't discriminate. As long as it's fun and functional and fabulous, I'm good with it. Favorite vacation place? Um, Barcelona. Really? Mm -hmm. I've only been twice. I'd like to go back again. I absolutely love it. It has everything. It has everything. It has everything from art museums to the beach, to the nightclubs, to the food, to the wine. So it's well to rounded. The, to walking around, to the people, to shopping. It has every single thing you could think of and any other vacation spot you would have. I love it. When's the last time you went to PR, Puerto Rico? Before the hurricane. Before the hurricane. Yes. Yeah. So it's been a little over two years. Yeah. So I need to go back. I knew. Did I, that I, come close to home with family or anything? Fortunately, most, all of my family had already moved here. Okay. So it was really friends. Okay. And we, and we did lose some people that we knew, wow. so unfortunately. I do need to go back. Usually I take my children every year. However, the year of the hurricane, we didn't go. And then the year after that, I got a deal to go to the Dominican Republic. Oh, <laughs> so I, okay. I took it. <laughs> so that, That's yeah. an experience in itself. It so, was great. We had a great time. I'd never been. I had never been my whole it's life. Beautiful, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. We lo and now that now my kids love it and they want to go back. I'm it's like, but well, we need to go to PR. <laughs> so, yeah. So I have to work it in with them. Yeah. Say. They're, they're they, all they, about the DR right now. Oh no 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 no. We <laughs> gotta we bring them we, home. We gotta go back to the motherland. <laughs> so so we'll see. Favorite place or thing to do in New York? Well, not favorite place. We already did that. So favorite thing. Really, I like to go on food crawls. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I like to Are you thinking about doing a show with Audrey, like just doing that? No, I've never thought of Weather that. Weather and food, wouldn't that be amazing? I never thought of that. Maybe we might start something. Ah. I don't know what to say. Let me write them, I need to write that down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. Food crawls. I do, I do just to like bounce around. I'll spend a day like just in a specific area. Like one time we went to, um, the Brooklyn Promenade yeah, and just beautiful. bounced from each place. Like you have an appetizer in each place and get to sample everything. I yeah, love it's kind of like bar hopping. Yes. Like a bar crawl. Right, but I do, I do food. Oh, yeah. I, and then I, you go work it out and put us all to shame. Yes. Right. Nice. Well, I work out like I do so I can eat like I do. <laughs> I <laughs> got you. <laughs> if you have one moment with your dad, mm -hmm. what would you talk about? What would you speak about? What would you say to him or what do you think he would say to you? So I guess that's a three-part question. Actually, it's funny. People, I, when I get asked that, I really feel, I feel at peace with my father. I feel like, I don't feel like I missed anything other than him meeting my children. That's okay. the only thing. I would love to see him experiencing them. Mm -hmm. But as far as he and I, like, I feel like I, even though I only had him for 30 years, I feel like I was, I was connected. Okay. And I feel him watching me. And I have to, like, one of the most wonderful things about having someone like that who was a musician mm -hmm. and they pass away, if they're in your family, you have the music that they live it's through. Forever. Right. So, like, you feel the spirit still around you. Yeah. And I still feel him with me. So, I, you know, maybe it's because he, I'm part of him and whatever it is. So, yeah. That's I don't, a strong connection. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't feel like he's gone or he's missing, right? There's always a presence in somewhere, some shape or form yeah, around me. Yeah. So to, to have him come back, it's not really specifically about me. It's more about, I would love to see him with my children. Okay. Does mm -hmm. he come to you? Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. When's the last time he came to you? If you don't mind sharing. I'm feeling him now, actually. Is he here? I feel him. Hi! Well, you know why? Because he <laughs> performed here at Lehman College, where yeah. your studios are. He, so as I walked through, I saw the, the banners of all the musicians that he oh plays with. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. That, that must feel great because I know sometimes I come across pictures. I think once or twice I probably send you a few. Mm -hmm. And then I know people must just always send you things. I love it. I love it. Right. I love when people tell me stories. I love when people stop me to t share a story. Everyone, so many people have a story with the first date was that seeing my dad or they met him somewhere and then he Good signed that. something. And I love it because it's for me, it's like filling in the pieces of the puzzle pieces of his life yeah. for where I wasn't there. Right. Someone else is telling me something that happened that I wasn't there, but so it's filling in all the puzzle pieces. Have you ever, I thought about this, have you ever introduced, just introduced yourself and nobody knew who he was or that person didn't know who he was? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Interesting. Yes. Um, Ironically, though, to add to that, yeah. um, at the same note, like a lot of young people, I'm surprised, know who he is. 
people that were born after he passed away. It's so it's it's wonderful parents. to see, right? It's so that that the parents are still playing the music and they the, the and it's, he's still being talked about in schools too. I get projects all the time. My friends he's who are teachers will send me for like Hispanic Heritage Month that they honored my dad. He's in the it's books. A, it's great. I love he's it. He's a legend. I love it. For, you know, he's yeah. he's a legend. Any behind the stories that you'd like to share? Of your colleagues or... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Something that won't get you in trouble, of course. Um, oh, my gosh. I don't... That's... No? I don't... It's not that I wouldn't share anything. I just... Uh, uh, blanking out. Um, There's a handsome uh, anchor that sits with you during the evening, I believe. He's kind of tall. I don't know his name. But he's very handsome. Dan Bowens? Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of texts about Dan Bowens <laughs> oh lately. Yes, he was announced. There's something about him. Yeah. Um, he was announced as our, our, our weekend anchor several months ago. Look at and, that. Um, he's been with the station quite a while, though. But I guess now that he's on the anchor he's desk. He's like the hottie. He's, well, I, listen, <laughs> he's a family man. He's married with a beautiful wife with three beautiful children. So I have to, you know, tell my girlfriends down, <laughs> down, 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 yeah. bow down. And he, you know what? It's, he, and he's so wonderful too. I mean, he's, he really is the whole package. <laughs> yeah. He looks, he looks very friendly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, real quick back to your daily shots of your outfits. Is yes. there any one particular person that are taking that shot? Oh my God. People ask me that all the time. Who's my mom wanted to know. She's like, who's a photographer? Is it the same person or does she just get um, random people? <laughs> the truth is it's, it's a variety of people. <laughs> And um, some of them, I don't even know. I literally will stop people on the really? street. Really? Yes. I ask people to ask, can you, can you just take, just keep pressing the photo and keep pressing the button and take this photo while I walk towards you? So it's your thing. Yeah. It's your thing. Yeah. I like that. All right. I have some more questions. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be the first thing or the first person in someone's day? I love it. I love it because... Like, you're giving us a smile or a frown, not because of you, mm -hmm. but just of the weather that you're giving us. Well, I feel that the weather part of the newscast is the one part that affects every single person watching. And traffic, too. Right? No. Not even? Because if you're not driving... Oh, that's true. Right, that's you're, right. You're not, you're okay. not affected. But okay. weather affects every single person you're right. watching. You're and absolutely so, right. So I, lo <laughs> so I love being part of someone's morning routine. Because I know I have my people that I watch, you know, and that, that part of my routine. Who you watch? Well, I'm watching us, of course. Okay. <laughs> I'm watching okay. Us, yeah. um, so I, I, I understand the impact that that is. And I love being part of somebody's morning routine. It's a very important day. It's a very important part in the and, day. And, you know, and it's also in the evenings, too, right? Because yeah. people are preparing for the next day. Yeah. And even on the weekends. I do the weather on the weekends. And yeah. I understand that people want to know what they can do with their kids or uh, driving upstate to see the full foliage, whatever it is. It, it really impacts people's lives. And I, I love being, being, a, being able to help them in making their plans. Any idea of how this winter is going to be? Should we have to brace well, we, ourselves? We are seeing snowy, cold winter. So, really? Yes. And now you can say, well, it's winter. That's what we have. But we've had it really good the last few winters. We have. So it's funny. I was just talking with my colleagues before I came here. And we were saying how, because we are preparing right now for a weather special, for our winter weather special. And we were seeing data that is indicating that we're in for oh, snow. Oh, great. I need to go winter. to Florida or something because I can't handle. I can't. What is Latina to you? Spicy. Beautiful. Passion. Beautiful. Aliveness. You, yeah. Aliveness? Mm -hmm. One more thing, because I, I, I don't know, I just have so much for you. What are you thinking about the J-Lo and Shakira in Super Bowl <gasps> 2020? I was so excited when I heard that. Were you? <laughs> yes! Can that, be, can that be more awesome? Oh, are we not, we're, not, we're not fanning? We're not fangirling this at all? <laughs> I was happy that they finally put two Latinas in front. Right! But I was not happy that it was just one at a time. Oh, no. I'm totally... You're, I think you're all game I'm for j and Shakira I on think the it's same fantastic. stage. No, I'm okay. all in. I love it. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> there will be no other show like that. Absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely right. They are going to blow it out of the water. Absolutely. Come on. You know it. The two of them, the both of them are powerhouses. I know. It's going to be fantastic. I, I wish I could go. And it's in Miami. I know. <laughs> on top of that. I mean, that's what everybody kept saying. Oh, it's in Miami. And mm. they want the distraction. And that's why they're finally giving us focus. And... You know, J-Lo's bigger than life. She doesn't need Shakira. Shakira. I, please. Let's just let it <laughs> no, be, right? Yes, just let's embrace it, be. it. Let's love it. It's going to be fabulous. Well, you heard it. You mm -hmm. heard it right here mm -hmm. on the Essence Show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. It's been so much fun sitting with you. I, I feel like I got here. a lot out of you, which was good. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being very transparent. Thank you. Uh, again, it was an honor sitting here with you. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I look forward to also bringing your brother on mm -hmm. to just share another side. Mm -hmm. Um, and just keep doing what you're doing. We absolutely love you. We love your, your personality. You're very bubbly. Thank you. Uh, you always look nice. The hair is always good. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry. And thank you for all you do. Thank, thank you. you for all you do. Um, I just want to thank you guys, my viewers, for checking us out today and being with us. Thank you for my production crew. Thank you for my family and friends. And, of course, the Bronx community for showing me some love and shining on me. I will continue to make you happy. Also, uh, my good and my rant was actually the J-Lo and Shakira. Yeah. I feel like J-Lo has waited a long time. It's, it's been her time. But she should have had that stage by herself. She should have had that Bronx diva moment and said, <laughs> I want the stage by myself, damn it. But I do love Shakira. Shakira is, has been a... Uh, She's been phenomenal through her career, too. Yeah. So I look forward to it, but y'all better get in line. <laughs> anyway, have a great night. See you next week right here on The Diaz Show. I also want to leave Audrey Fuente with a set of some flowers. Oh. And I just want to give her thanks. Oh, and it's your mom. And it's my mom. <laughs> she makes thank my you. mom very happy in thank the morning. You. So I just wanted to give you those oh, just a little thank gratitude. thank you. Very sweet. <laughs> And once again, thank you again. We love you. Thank you. And check us out next week on The Diaz Show. Have a good night. Te quiero. Thank you. Oh, hey. Audrey Puente here. I'm hanging with my girl, Diaz, on The Diaz Show. So get in line. on the set of the D Essence Show. Please tune in each and every Wednesday at 9 p.m. File Study 4, Optimum 68, and live streaming, bronxnet.tv. Or you better get in line. Yeah.